quarterly and our first lesson from our new quarterly is the importance of the word and the title of our quarterly is strengthening your walk and of course we cannot strengthen our walk in God without knowing and eating of his word and so we start off this morning the importance of the word and as we look at the, 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 the topic for those who have the quarterly the word here is in capital letter so we know it is speaking to the proper noun we know it is speaking to the person and as we go into the lesson we will get a better understanding of who this person is of course there are many of us who know but as we get into the lesson it will be fleshed out and as we examine this word it is speaking when we look at it in greek it, it's talking about the logos and the logos here is referring to the spoken the speech the spoken word so the importance of the spoken word and as we will see in john we will go over there momentarily we will see that it is this spoken word that was operating at the beginning of time as we know it so we're going to be looking at that word the importance of it why as children of god we should not just glide over it and see it treat it as just okay it's another thing but we must place place high esteem on this the spoken word of god we have our text which is saint john 1 and 1 to 14 and the memory verse zooms in on verse 1 of that chapter and of and that will be dealt with in the lesson as we go so let's jump over to saint john chapter 1 it begins in the beginning the beginning of time was the word and we look in our bibles and we see the same word that is in our lesson it's in capital letter so we can say in the beginning of time was the logos was the spoken word and the spoken word was with god and the spoken word the logos was god and it says in verse 2 the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so the world that we have was made by the logos that we are studying today and brethren for how long we have the word the logos did its job once and creation is still in place praise the name of the lord do we can, can we tap in and and see how important how great and mighty the word is once spoken do we understand the the, the magnitude or the depth of when we speak the effect of when we speak god's word so we are going to go as john told us in the beginning was the word so let us go over to genesis so that we can understand what was the word doing in the beginning we all know the creation story but it is important there are many times we tend to glide over the word oh i know it already but every time the Holy Spirit puts a word in us, he wants to show us something new. There is fresh bread there. So we should not disobey. We should always um, take time to dig deep into that which the Holy Spirit is showing us. So he says, he begins, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And how did he do it? And the earth... So the earth, as we 
as we know it was without form and today I, I don't want us to run over any word I want us to because we're studying the word so we're going to be digging and pulling apart the different things that we see so the first thing we see is that the earth at creation was without form and this speaks to as we see the word in Hebrew it speaks to toho and this has to do with desert, empty place, worthless thing, wilderness, confusion, desolation, a place of chaos. So in the beginning of time, the earth was empty. The earth was in confusion. The earth was in desolation, a place of chaos, worthless. It goes on and and with a and void and the void here speaks to ruin and darkness was upon the face of the deep so the darkness that we're talking about here is not just the absence of light but misery destruction death ignorance sorrow wickedness that's what, that, that's what darkness speaks to. All of those things were on the face of the deep. And God, looking on, said, he spoke the word, the spoken word. Of course, once it comes out of his mouth, it has to do with the spoken word. So we see God looking on all of this chaos, doom, and gloom, and he spoke. He did not get flustered or anything like that. He simply took command. He looked at it, and he spoke the Logos word. He said, let there be light. And the light here that we're talking about that God spoke it's not just the absence of darkness. What God was actually saying at creation is, let the spirit realm be seen. Because if we should at our homes turn off the light, it does not mean that the things in our homes are not there. It's just that we cannot see it because there is darkness. So what God wants us to see from creation here is that it is the spirit realm that is important, the most important thing. That's where it, it is. That's where our focus should be. It should not be so much on the natural. And we find that we stumble, we get confused because we are focusing too much on the natural but so let us look in our time in our life as we have it now and why the compiler wants us to understand the importance of the word everything that was happening at creation we can see now happening in our land there is confusion there is misery there is death either physical or spiritual, there is death. There is emptiness. Sometimes the enemy would want us to feel worthless. There is sorrow. All of these things that we see at creation, we, we are looking at that was at creation, we experience it happening, not necessarily in our lives, but we see them going on around us. What does God want us to do he does not want us to get confused. He does not want us to magnify the negative things that we are seeing. But he wants to take us back to creation. We who were made in his image and likeness, he wants us to do something. And we have what we, what, what we know as the law of confession. No. What is a law? 
the law is a law is a principle based on a predictable consequence of an act that something's going to happen confession in in, in greek is homologia which speaks to saying what has been said no we know what has been said because we have the evidence in the word of god we know that when there was chaos and darkness and all of those things god said something god said let there be light so when we are experiencing whatever disappointment god is saying to us don't behave like there is no hope tap into the spirit and say what has been documented and we have it in the form of the word of god just as god said let there be light he wants us to stand look our situations eyeball to eyeball and say let there be light now psalm 119 verse 130 says the entrance of god's word giveth light and so we are going to be looking if we are sick we are going to be looking at that sickness and speak by his stripes i am healed and when we speak that the spirit realm is going to be coming clearer and clearer to us the, the healing that is already in the spirit is going to start manifesting our lives will it manifest the first day maybe not but it means that we are going to firmly place our conviction on god's word as pastor would say we're going to lick it till it busts every day we are going to get up and we are going to confess that which God has already said. He said that healing is a children's bread and we're going to confess that in our situation. If we feel a sense of worthlessness and boy, everything we do feel, I can't make it. We are going to speak into our situation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All we're doing is just confessing and believing with our confession that I can do it. Whatever, if it, you feel like, boy, this is it. Because sometimes in the, the, the physical sense, our bodies feel like, boy, I, I, I'm going out now. Stand and say, I shall not die. Because that's what his word says. But I shall live and declare the glory of God. Brethren, I can sit here all morning and speak to us the promises of God. But what I want us to get in our spirit as the Holy Spirit would want us to see is that the antidote for everything that we need in this life has already been given. God just wants us to come into agreement, to confess that which he has already said to us to magnify the spirit realm and when we magnify the spirit realm as the songwriter says the things of this world will just go strangely dim they will just wane just turn on the light just as we see it in the natural when we turn on the light the darkness has to go so just turn on just turn up and turn on God's word in our situation and the negatives have to go that's as simple as it is it, it, it sounds simple when we're teaching but when the robot meets the road but we have to we have to hold fast we have to we would have seen on the news some time ago how I think it were some pit bull that they how they would have bitten the baby and I think another lady when those dogs latch themselves onto you they're not going to let go even if 
you threaten their life and you have a gun and you they think you're going to shoot them they're holding on to their prey and that's what the holy spirit wants that's what god wants brethren that like the pit bull would latch its teeth in its prey we have to latch our faith in god's word it said he says in hebrews hold fast to the profession and the profession is talking about our confession hold fast to the confession of our hope and it's we're not hoping um without evidence he has given us the evidence and he's saying hold fast to that you see what my word has done to creation and it's the same thing my word will do to your life Hold on to it. For we do not live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceed out of the word of God. So I, I, would, I would ask us this morning, are we living or are we just mere existing? God wants us to start living. God wants us to know him like Paul says, Oh, that I may know him. God wants us to get into an intimate relationship with him. And when we do, brethren, I can tell you, our walk with him will become more glorious. Our walk with him will be sweeter. We will not be so bothered by the things that the enemy would want to throw at us, by the, the daily challenges of life. We will not be so bothered. So we go, that would have taken in the memory verse, we go to the introduction and we see that right off the bat it says, the memory verse speaks of the word and we have already looked at it, the, the logos that was in the beginning, that was with and that was God. The word embodies the personage, character, plan and eternal purpose of God which will never fail for it is the very expression of God himself brethren God cannot fail the word is the very expression of God the word cannot fail he says before his word fails heaven and earth will pass that's how serious he takes his word. And we cannot, it is impossible to be a child of God and don't place value on God's word. Don't place value on him. It makes no sense we serve him if, we're, if we don't place value on his word. And the truth is, if we should examine our lives, there are many times that we take the word of our friends or other persons more serious than we take the word of God. We are living in serious times. And if we don't get to the point where we take God's word seriously, we are not going to make it. It's as simple as that. We, we won't survive the times if we don't get to the place where it is God's word or nothing at all. It doesn't matter who is going to leave me. It doesn't matter the, the, the friendship that I'm going to lose. It may be that even in our very household, persons are going to shun us. But we must understand that it is about God's word. We go on. Verse 14 of John 1 also states that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word that was at creation came and he not only came but he gave his life for us. Jesus is the word and Colossians 2 9 describes him as being the fullness of Godhead bodily Jesus in the form of man sh showed us God 
we examine the life of Jesus and we see our Father God. That's what the word is saying. The word is the same as God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. God, Malachi 3, 6 would remind us that God is unchanging. He is immutable. The very God that we see at creation here is the same God today. He is going to, and you know, brethren, there are times, and, and, and why we tend to waver. There are times when God would give us a word. I'm going to come through. I'm going to deliver. And we feel good. We rejoice if we were in the, the physical church. We have a party, a praise party, man, and we dance because God says that he's going to deliver. But the next day or the very day that we get the word, all hell break loose. And our faith is tested. But we need to remember that even though our faith is tried and it's going to be tried, God said that he's going to deliver and he's not going to change. So it means that we, there are times where we are going to have to pray and say, God, help me to believe that you change not. Because I'm not telling you, brethren, that it is going to be easy and that it's going to be a walk in the park. Sometimes testing hard, it is hard. But we, God wants us to know that even though it is hard, he is there. Just look at the natural situation and say, boy, the light is turned off in my house. But I know that the fridge is there. I know that the bed is over there. So I will push through the darkness and, I, and, I'm, and, I can, and I'm going to touch them. It's the same thing in the spirit. God, I, I, I can't understand what's happening right now. I can't see your hand, God, everywhere. Look dark and dismal. But I'm going to press through this darkness. I'm going to push on and touch that which is already manifesting itself in the spirit. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. God, I'm going to press on. I mean, the shame and the disgrace and everybody looking at me, God. I'm going to press on and touch the spirit because that's where it is. He goes on. The word is creative as we see at creation. Self-fulfilling, powerful, true, inerrant, cannot go wrong infallible cannot make any mistake complete and life-giving it is trustworthy and sure god's word is settled forever in heaven earth and heaven may pass away but the word of god will never pass away and that's luke 21 33 god's power is in his word and the spirit of god is the breath of God. It is impossible to speak without breathing. Hallelujah. Therefore, all creation is the result of the word of God going forth through his spirit, God's breath. Praise God. Brethren, God lives inside of us. So every time we speak him, Every time we speak his word, we are breathing the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that overed over creation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the same spirit that when we speak God's word over in our lives, it's the same spirit that is overing over our situation. Hallelujah. And when the spirit of God hovers over our situation brethren it has to change and i'm going to remind us that it may not change in our timing but it is going to change 
Praise the name of the Lord. I Are we hearing? Hello? Praise his holy name. All right. My internet is acting up. Okay, my internet. Acting up. 